Well, I've been asked to um, talk about some of my involvement in the broadcasts of Fabrenia uh, and special events. So the truth is that uh, where I did most of my activity was in special events, which is uh, Hanukkah Live from its inception, as well as um, the uh, Lagboima Parade. So let me just give you a little bit, a little bit of uh, understanding of what it, what it meant. When, when we had to uh, translate simultaneously the words of the Rep, it, it's a very difficult thing for a number of reasons. So I, I can just tell you that there were sort of two kinds in my mind, two, two ways to try and do it. One is to try and give a word-for-word -word translation. And that has certain advantages because when you do a word by word, they never said a word, you translate the word, a phrase, a phrase, you translate the phrase. But the manner of the Rebbe speaking was never that linear. The Rebbe could go off in a tangent, put another thing in a chatzir rebua, and, and how do you, and you're just translating words, it almost sounds disjointed, especially going from one language to another. So that it has a mile that you keep up with what the Rebbe is saying. It has a chsorum because you, you don't know where it's going. And sometimes it just is unintelligible to people that are listening. The other option is to translate sort of the inyonim as the Rebbe is going along, which has a mile, you're saying something of substance. But then when you are saying something, you have to listen to what the Rebbe is saying so that you can say the next thing. Because you're not translating word for word as he's saying it. You're waiting till he finishes a phrase, a sentence, two sentences, and then you're giving sort of a little synopsis while you have to listen to the next thing that they're saying. So what can happen in that is you, you pay too much attention to what you're saying and you lost what the Rebbe said and you're stuck. That's two of the issues that you have. Another thing is the Rebbe says something that you don't know. The Rebbe brings a Maimah Chazal. Do, do we all know the Mora Chazal the Rebbe used? We don't. We know a lot of them. We use the Mora Chazal. But you don't know all the Mora Chazal. The Rebbe also said something. Uh, just to, for, for, for uh, the humor of the matter, one of the translators, I'm not I'm really going to say who, and the Rebbe said, Kesef and Shemira Elabakarka. So he translated the best investment is real estate. Uh, he, he wasn't familiar with that particular Gibara. And he sort of on the fly said what he thought it might mean. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't mean that. You boys are learning. You know what it means? The kesef, you have a cotton of kesef, you have to hide it in the ground. So uh, those are the kind of things that, that you, have to, you have to deal with. And you have to hope somehow that whichever method you use, that somehow it comes out with some degree of uh, intelligibility to the, to the audience that's listening. It was extremely, extremely pressure filled. And I, I, I recall personally myself, I was always tzibrochen. And I'm saying really tzibrochen because I felt that I, I never did justice to the Rebbe. And after all, we're, we are representing the Rebbe to a world. Now, people say, well, you know, in, in, in the, the UN, they do it. Yeah, they, the secret is that they get the typed up speech beforehand and they make notes on it beforehand, and they're reading it uh, while the person is saying it. And if there are changes, they fill in the changes, but they're not translating on the spot. Even, even Rabbi Hech, Rabbi J.J. Hech. So uh, he would write when the Rebbe wrote, who spoke very quickly, he would write certain, so he had at least something to work on. On the other hand, he had to go through a whole sikha that way. But we didn't have that. But I will tell you, share with you a very, a very interesting story. Rabbi Hecht, who is my uh, wife's uncle, so we were friendly. One time at, uh, at a, at a um, he said to me, I don't know, I can't do, can't do this, I can't do this. We got to tell the Rebbe, tell us what you're going to talk about, so we can prepare and we'll be ready to, say, to translate. <laughs> so I said to him, you can do whatever you want, just leave me out of it. <laughs> Well, he did write to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe responded. And the Rebbe said that the Inyonim, specifically, 
And the Rebbe doesn't know the Inyonim until the, the time when he speaks them. And in fact, he said, and that year he didn't speak about Rabshu and Bayechoy, he spoke about Rabbi Akiba, and obviously so it was completely, it was completely different. So uh, we were sort of at a very, a very draining, draining, extremely draining. And I, I would, after, after every one, I would tell myself, I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. That's not, I can't face the Rebbe with, with, with having done this kind of, uh, what I figured was a botch job. Now, my, my uh, and everyone said, you got to do it. There's no, there's no one else. You got to do it. So I, I kept on doing it. But it was very, very stressful and traumatic. And I, 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 never, I never felt that I did, I did the Rebbe uh, justice uh, in, these, in these things. Now, by Fabrengen. By Fabrengen, it was a little bit different because by Fabrengen, you had the 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 uh, intermission where, the, where where everyone was in the guni were being sung so if you felt that you didn't adequately transmit the general idea that the rebbe was saying because of the arichos so then you could recap and the recap would be would be um, would be much better because while you live you you have inyan you could explain the inyan but when you're doing for example like the Ima parade it's not possible because you've got to keep on with the what they call the color. You tell people what's happening, what's going on, and uh, after the Rebbe, you, you don't have time to sit and say, "Oh, you know, we know what the Rebbe spoke about here. Let me give you a synopsis of what the Rebbe spoke about." That was that was not really uh, possible. So it it was, um, you know, I, I all I all I can say is that Baruch Hashem now that they they put the the um, uh, words on the bottom. Uh, captions, and you don't have to hear the person translating. So I hope they've erased that, and no one will ever know what kind of lousy job I did on uh, on all of the uh, the Rebbe the uh, You know, as as a as a youngster, a relative relative youngster, I, I don't think I had the the um, training that I have now. Why was I Why was I put on this job? because I had some experience with radio. I, I had a regular radio show uh, for 33 years and um, I would do well on radio. So a TV show, whatever. So people felt that I, I had this uh, some, some degree of experience, which was true, I did. I had the experience. I knew uh, generally how you, how you do these things, but um, not to the standard. Uh, you can imagine the Rebbe's standard was so, in, uh, the Rebbe's language. You have, to, you have to understand, the Rebbe knew English thoroughly, thoroughly. When the Rebbe wanted a certain word, he would choose a certain word to specifically express what he wanted. Not common words, because the, the, the Rebbe knew the dictionary. He could choose words uh, as, as he wanted. And uh, the Rebbe was very particular about the words that we use, very particular. And who could who could uh, keep up to the to the Rebbe's standard? So while it was it was um, an experience, I mean there were times that there were sikhs when I finished the sikha and I wasn't sure what the Rebbe said. When I went with the method where I was translating sort of word word by word, phrase by phrase, I could go through a whole sikha and I'm not sure what the Rebbe said because yeah, phrases I know, but the inya you have to be able to say the inya. And for that, if you're focused on translating words, which the words also don't translate instantly, you know, you're totally focused on getting a, the right words. You don't know what you don't know what the Indian is, what they ever said. There's some what they ever said. I knew what it was about, but I couldn't give you a synopsis of what the sikha was. Um, and besides the fact that the, the Rebbe did speak, obviously, when it was when it was on a, a Hanukkah or when it was like Baima. The Rebbe spoke at a much lower level than it was in a sikha. A sikha that was, uh, even a sikha that was broadcast, so I think from Regis it was broadcast. So uh, the Rebbe spoke sometimes heavy in Yon, especially the, the, the latter part of the Tabrengen, were shvere in And uh, it, it wasn't that way. It, it was uh, a, a much lower level, but like Baimer or Hanukkah, 
it was a completely uh, lower level of, of, of uh, depth. And so it, it, it did lend itself easier. By a Fabrengen, start with, with, a, with a Hadren. I've been saying a Hadren. How do you explain a Hadren? Say it over in English. When you're, <laughs> and two, the problem, of course, is not always are we as familiar as we should have been with the subject matter that the Rebbe was talking about. And the Rebbe told us, I'm making a Hadren on this Musichta. Okay, so you go and you learn, you learn the, 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 the end of the Musichta, you learn something, you have a familiarity, you, 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 you're, you're in the Indian. And the Rebbe picks up a sikhta and it's not pulled to chmeis, uh, well, what, 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 it, what it is. And you're, you're, left, you're left hanging to, uh, to some degree. So, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm glad I did those things. It's uh, whatever, whatever schus there is in it. On the other hand, I know that in himul et benishgem kin leviyosu them because it was not the, yeah, it's not the quality which the Rebbe would have uh, that, that the Rebbe needed to project himself. And, and yet, and yet, I also think to a great degree, when the Rebbe was, was on cable, the Rebbe's face, the Kedusha that emanated from the Rebbe, penetrated the screen. There was a fellow who told me, I was flipping through my channels, I came across, and he said, I was mesmerized. I sat and I watched for two hours. Now, he didn't know a word that ever said the English the language. It didn't matter to him. It didn't, it, the words were not interesting. He didn't understand you know, what was going on. He listened. I'm not sure it was shy not to listen. But he simply sat and watched the Rebbe's holy face. And, and it, you know, obviously when a person, you, you saw the Rebbe in person, the, 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 the Kedusha on the Rebbe's face, he saw the Shechina on the Rebbe's face. But even in television, it transmitted. People saw the 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 the, the, the upon them of the Rebbe. They were they were mesmerized by it. So it, it covered up to some degree on on the inadequacy of the of the people that were translating because that that vision that image the Rebbe sitting there the uh, the the, the, the sitting behind him it was such a fascinating thing for people to see that the, it it was ma'ira than the shamas it really was ma'ira than the shamas so. Uh, I don't know if I've, if I've been helpful to you, but uh, that's some of my experience. As I said, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to have the experience. And um, um, that, I guess, that sums it up. It's important to know that the Hiskashas to the Rebbe is learning his Torah, which, of course, the Rebbe said it, and elsewhere, that the, that's what Hiskashas is. But there's a very important, discussion is a pneumistic thing here. When you learn the Rebbe's Fabrengis, and I mean the Rebbe's Fabrengis, the way he said it, in the style that he said it, it shapes your mind. You become a kusha because the, your mind begins to think and analyze and, and, and in, in accordance with the, with the Rebbe. I, I look back at myself. I mean, I heard hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of Fabrengis that I stood uh, by the Rebbe Zabrengis when I was a youngster. And uh, I, I do have a certain thought patterns that I can identify as coming from the Rebbe. Uh, how, how, do I, how do I have that? I have that because listening to the Rebbe so much really made my mind a small little reflection of, of, uh, of the Rebbe's mind. And so Bochum, they want to have a Pnimiziki Skashras Learn the Rebbe's Fabrengen. You learn the Fabrengen. Listen to the Fabrengen. That's how you have a Pnimizikis Kashas.